Alright, well, this is a complex puzzle box that I've been working on. It has wooden combination locks, hidden compartments, engraved encryptions, some magnets, and more. So, I'm going to start on the side here, and we're going to push that middle piece in, slide the panel down, and repeat the process. And now we're going to flip it over to the reverse side, and do the same thing, slide that middle piece in, the panel down, the middle piece in again, and the panel down once more. Then we're going to come around to the front of the box here and make sure that those side panels are in their downright position. And we'll notice that the middle piece there on the front actually has room to slide over thanks to those side pieces and slide down and that provides just enough clearance for this top part to slide off. But of course it's not that simple. We got a large dial here, a few knobs, and some domino engravings. If I try and remove the panel, it's pretty clear that it's locked, and so it looks like we're gonna need some help opening up this thing. So I'm going to put the box back the way it was, with one key exception, the top is no longer on it. So what that means is that when I get around to the back panel of the box, it will be able to slide up because the top is no longer preventing it from doing so. Alright, here we are, and I can just slide that right up, and we'll notice that there is something under there. Um, so let's go around to the other side, try and do the same thing. Yep, there it is, and we're going to try and push that thing out from the back here. Yep, and pull it out and see what we got. But first, I'm going to put the box aside so we can get a better look at it. Alright, so it looks like we got some type of secret empty half drawer here with some more engravings. Now, if you have a sharp eye, you'll notice that this piece here looks familiar. We're going to bring the main box back, and it is, in fact, that middle piece on the dial there. And if we just push it a little... We'll notice it pops right off and it appears to be some sort of magnetic key of sorts. So as shown on that drawer, we're going to place it on that diagram and we'll notice that it sticks just like that. And if we take that piece and following the arrows, we can slowly drag it across the path outlined there. Next, we can line it up with that other diagram at the bottom. I actually have it backwards, but no matter if we pull on it, a concealed drawer appears, and it looks like we got all kinds of stuff in there. We have two gears, let's see if I can get a better look. They have the different letters of the alphabet engraved on the different teeth, and the other gear is the same way. And then we have this other piece down here that has a lot going on but it does have dominoes. And if we go back to the original box, which had those dominoes in the first place, we'll see if they are related. And sure enough, they are indeed similar and gives us some number pairs that we can use later on. So why were those important? Well, the bottom number on the dominoes refers to either the first peg on the left or the second peg on the right. 
the top numbers on each domino refer to the number of spokes on the gears. So one gear has six spokes, which corresponds to the first peg, while the other gear has five spokes, which we saw correspond with the number two domino or the second peg. Now, even though the gears are on the right pegs, they need to be placed such that these pointers line up with two pre-selected letters. This is where that middle graphic comes into play. Some people may notice that that is a county map of the state of Colorado. That state's abbreviation is CO, and it's these two letters that the outer pointers need to be aligned with. Now that's important because if one gear was a few letters off, each letter in the decrypted code would also be a few letters off and it would not make any sense. Now then, let's get on to decrypting this information. I'll simply align the first letter with the left pointer and read the output from the right pointer. We can repeat this process for all the remaining letters. The result will be the combination to the main lock on the puzzle box. I am now going to speed through the rest of the letters and the resulting text will appear on the screen. Okay, back here with the box, we can see that it is still locked and the knobs are not turning. Here's that text again that we can rewrite to form the combination that we'll put into the dial. So let's enter it in and see what we get. Then we should be able to disengage the locks and pull away the bolts and remove the lid. And there you have it, access to whatever valuables you had in there. That'll do it for me. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up to give it a like. Thanks for watching.